this is a piece that I made in my sketchbook over here. Uh, it's interesting to look at this again because you know I, I work in sketchbooks. I've worked in sketchbooks pretty consistently since I was about uh, 20 years old. And so one always feeds into the next. And so giving it up for this project was difficult for me because I didn't have a wonderful reference of the things I was just doing. And I was a little bit lost at sea for a minute. Mm -hmm. And so like I didn't come back to the show until the next opening, but I like, you know, selfishly and feverishly like went over to my book first to like, you know, see like the things that I had done. Um, this sketchbook for me was like a bit of a departure in the sense that I really, you know, drawing has always been fundamental to my practice, but I've committed to the idea of painting in the last year. Uh, my background is in photography and I've done video work and a lot of installation work. Um, so I've always drawn, but I really wanted to learn how to paint for a long time. And it's really only started to take off in the last year or so. So with this book, and I work, I tend to work large, just works, the physicality of that size works for my body, I like moving my body when I actually paint. Um, so this was great because working small, I was able to like work through a lot, a lot of ideas quickly. I was concerned at first that it felt like every page was just sort of like completely random and different than the thing before it. And there was a point early on when I actually like went on to Amazon to see if I could buy another one of the books. <laughs> this thing does not add up at all. Sold out, sorry. Yeah, right. Well, you know, but then I actually like just sort of committed to it. And like most paintings, they unfold over time and I would come back to them and work on them. And then, you know, as I look at some of these things, there's an incomplete to a lot of them, which is totally fine too. And like the sentiment that's been echoed a few times tonight, um, you know, there's some of these things, like, God, this is terrible. You know, I, and, it, and this is, becomes a public document, unlike most of my sketchbooks. And you know, I have another one right here. Um, and Amanda makes all my sketchbooks, so if you guys ever need to do a custom sketchbook, she's wonderful and they're for sale, the custom covers. But, um, but then, you know, when I think about it and I go through these, it's just these things that are filled with tons of terrible drawings. And I don't care, and actually, you know, welcome that because things come out of that, you know what I mean? Um, those, you know, I don't even want to call them mistakes, but there's a casualness to the way that I draw. There's there's definitely a doodling quality that then gets built upon and, you know, other more, you know, firm things come out of that. Um, so it's a, it's a wonderful process. And then the cool thing about like, the paint, like learning to paint, and specifically with this piece, is that you know, and in, in full disclosure, I actually started this, um, I don't even remember when, maybe like six months ago. And it's like a lot of things, like there's a, an initial hit, and there's a gestural quality to the way that I put down my marks, and, and I was pulling things out, and I had some things in the studio that I did start in the time of the, the, the project, and they were going fine, but I wasn't really sure, and then I saw this one, and it was, it just, there was a new light to it. There's, there, I just saw things in it that I didn't see the first time, as there is, you know, even one of these sketches, um, in this book and, and other pieces too. Um, so it was exciting to me to, to find new things in it. And that's the, that discovery in art making in general and especially for painting for me now. I mean, I look intensely at this stuff and sometimes full of apathy because I do, how much time I spend looking at them. But um, there's it's, that, that level of discovery and the intensity that came out of it, like once I committed that I was going to work on this piece, you know, the consuming quality of it. Um, it's, it's kind of addicting. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but uh, yeah, I find myself thinking about it all the time. I would take pictures of it, I would bring it into Photoshop and play around with ideas, try things in the studio, and, um, and it's not always, it's, I don't find it easily replicable either. I mean, I, I do tend to work well when I have a deadline in front of me. Um, so having that pressure uh, suits me as an artist, as I know some of the, you know, my, my practice is, consistent over a long period of time, but it definitely has like this sort of movement to it. Um, so I really enjoy that. And it's fun for me, you know, I've been making art seriously, if you will, you know, since, you know, for 25 years now. And I'm completely enamored with how you can still kind of get blown away with the newness or novelty of new approaches, um, finding new artists, the way they inspire me. Um, so yeah, I guess I should bring it back to the sketchbook, but um, yeah, they're good. It's a wonderful though. I mean, I love. It. I mean, it, 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 like there was years that this is all I did. Like I didn't. After art school, um, I got to be a fan of photography, and 
I kind of fell into like a domestic life, and the only work I made was in sketchbooks. And I always kind of laughed at kids in our school. They were really kind of that mode of like, you know, if I don't make art, I'm going to die. And I was like, well, I can go like mountain biking or watch basketball games or something. Like that. <laughs> I, never, I never stopped actually drawing my book. So it's funny all these years later to be like, wow, it's, you know, maybe I had a little bit more of a casual attitude than some of those other students did at the time, but it really is like a bug that kind of stu has stuck with me. And, you know, it's more so at this point now that I'm not sure what I would do if I didn't have it. So, uh, but it always comes back to these books. Um, this, this one's almost complete, maybe another one, which I'm beginning to work on now. But I'm, I am painting more in my books now. And it's, so it's helpful just to get practice, low stakes practice too. Um, whereas, you know, I can get kind of rigid about working on something that's larger and I want to exhibit. Um, whereas these little things, it's like whatever. So you went from photography, like you started in painting and drawing, went into photography, and now are coming back to painting and drawing. Are you, are you combining the two at all, or using one media to help sure. the other? Yeah, so I mean, my influences are across the board, and I do actually use photography in some of my paintings. Um, not in this one, but I have some pieces at home right now where I'm referencing photography in them. And I, you know, Part of my concern is this, is like I said, stylistically, yeah, I felt it was all over the place. And I am still actually answering questions for myself, like what kind of paintings do I want to make? Mm -hmm. How do I want to make them? And I used to be concerned as a student of art history, of like, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm really interested in minimalism now. I can't be doing these popish things. And it took me a while to realize it's like, okay, it's the 21st century. Like, it doesn't really matter. Like, there's people that oscillate and bounce around all the time. And I shouldn't really, you know, like I'm putting these like restrictive, like, you know, bury this up for myself, and I just, I, I have nothing but time until I die, so I'm just going to keep letting the process unfold, and if there's something gratifying, or like there's little, like, uh, kernels around, along the pathway, then I feel like I'm doing the right thing. How large would you like to go? I mean, I, I, I have played around with some large canvases before, I mean, I would love, I mean, I'm limited by space, I work in my apartment, I have a great little workspace, but it's, that's roughly about as big as I can go there, so. I can see a world where having a larger studio somewhere would make sense for me. Mm -hmm. And starting to kind of actually work in that canvas too, but there's limitations. Mm -hmm. As it, some people are supposed to be, you know, a lot of huge work for spaces to be in. So. Yeah. so, the interesting thing about your sketchbooks is that you have multiple, multiple of them and you've <clears throat> worked in them for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, it's not, so. um, Do you go back to them and open it up and have a certain feeling about certain images in the book? Because with this one, you said it, you didn't feel like it had flow. I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah. I think, I, I see flow in that, but there's definitely images that I go, I look and I go, this one, this one, this one. And I had that same feeling of coming back and looking at mine mm -hmm. and thinking like, wow, I didn't see this in this piece before. Sure. I still have that feeling for certain pieces, but then I recognize others. That's a kind of a delightful thing about looking back at books, and I actually do see the flow in this now. I just was nervous about it, again, being sort of a public document, that it didn't even like, add up to anything, but it kind of makes sense to me now. And sort of that semi-erratic, like, uh, not schizophrenic, but just, you know, bouncing between styles and modes of thinking about how I want to work. But yeah, I do go back to books sometimes, and sometimes I'm like, wow, I've evolved so much as a mark maker and a drawing, and I actually have, but it's funny to see things that I made, like, Years ago, I'm like, oh, well, I mean, it's not the same drawing, but it makes sense to me. Right. You know, so I mean, with, it makes sense that I grew out of that. With that, I, in my undergraduate studies, I had a teacher, Anna Van Grossen, who was a potter, mm -hmm. um, makes amazing pottery, and she had said something that stuck to me, which was, your drawings are three years ahead of the painting. That's funny. Yeah, so that's it's interesting, interesting that you have this sketchbook and you're branching out into this, but I guess what I'm wondering is if you look at your old ones, could you see yourself still making things? That's them? funny, yeah. Well, it's interesting because I'm definitely dealing with technical painting issues. Like, I can devise images, I can work my way, I can invent a thousand ways to make a drawing. You know, I'm going to have such comfort with that uh, material. Um, I'm limited by my understanding of how paint actually works. Mm -hmm. So, I do feel like there's this sort of like catch up thing that happens. Um, but that's that's part of the pleasure too. I mean, I, I don't, I haven't really got, well, I get frustrated, sure, but I just see the growth in it, so okay. it, it's, um, it's fine. Yeah, like I said, I'm excited to just keep playing with it, so. Good.
That's a fascinating thing. Well, that's what actually happened. Yeah, I think so. What's happening in there, not that I was talking about the plasticity, the plasticity of the paint, and that it not was fully seen. No, yeah, this is not, this is very thin. Yeah. Where there's that mechanism there, too. Yeah. I mean, I bet it's that mechanism. I want to. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I want to also say that part of this show is to show the vulnerability of an artist yeah. and the fact that, again, not everything that's in a sketchbook is going to be the first and final thing, you know, and, and you're working right. through things just like a writer or anyone else does, you know, you continue and that's why you erase and you go back or you, you know, I still use whiteout because I will never let go of it. But, um, <laughs> sad, yes. Uh, but but it's, that's why I called it the diary of an artist because there was this implementation, uh, in, you know, I wanted people to understand that the artists were giving, you are giving people a tiny view into your life and who you are and what you're doing. So I'm really glad that that made you feel uncomfortable as much as I'm sorry that it made you uncomfortable. Well, yeah. No, but at the same, same time, that's part of sure. your yeah. process. And there was another artist who will be here next week as well and felt the same way. And she's like, what if somebody takes my sketchbook? Oh. And I was like, <laughs> I will do my best to make sure no one takes your sketchbook. <laughs> um, you know, but this, this, it was a real concern. Mm -hmm. And I understood it, so honestly, I'm happy that you felt like part of you was missing because it was here. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was, but it's, it's fun to come back and visit, so thank you for doing yeah. this. Yeah, thank you. This was great, thank you.